Ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, however you're watching, welcome back to the dojo. I'm Ryu, he's Age, we're back for another episode of Verses in the Dojo, and this is, well, the the second to last episode of Verses, because we have to do the season wrap-up stuff next week, but this is the last episode of Verses in the sense of we're comparing episode to episode. So this is going to be episode 24, the final episode of uh, Jujutsu Kaisen and Tokyo Avengers for season one of both shows, and honestly... There are only a couple things we really wanted to touch on about both shows before we uh, dole out the point here. But this was another good week for both shows. We got pretty much everything that needed and what we expected to happen in both shows. On Jujutsu side, they wrapped up the season and that mini arc um, pretty well. We got Nobara character development? Who saw that one coming? But Which I'm personally fine with. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally fine with it, considering she didn't really have a lot going on the whole season. And we mentioned in the reaction that it, we talked about reward show stuff and blah, blah, blah. You can check out that uh, video for that really quick. But she won, like, Girl of the Year for, like, the Crunchyroll Awards and over some other characters that I personally haven't seen but know of. And it was weird to me. But I guess maybe that last episode push maybe really gave it to her. It's kind of like, what have you done for me lately kind of thing. And that that last episode for Nobra really stuck in people's mind on top of Jujutsu being like a very popular show in 2021. So did she deserve it objectively? I'm still going to go probably not, but at l the very least, it was cool for her to get some serious character development in the last episode there. So... With that, that made Jujutsu a pretty solid episode. I mean, Mappa, Mappa, the the animations and all that stuff were fantastic. The fight scenes were cool. Uh, I'd say the blood powers on the uh, the cursed idol painting guys were were pretty interesting. Uh, we still have one brother left, which leads into season two shenanigans, trying to avenge his brothers and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, the JoJo reference guy was always good. I mean, gotta love any JoJo reference. Uh, just a solid episode across the board. And I know will continue one of these days. Right. And <laughs> we, I was talking about it before. We're, you know, we haven't heard from Suka in a while. Well, he made a freaking great appearance. <laughs> not too little, not too much. Just just, just going to take this, take this finger w with my mouth hand. <laughs> or my hand mouth, should I say. So that was... That was pretty, uh, the pretty damn hilarious. The the only thing we really didn't get uh, was a final Juju stroll, which that's fine. But anyway, yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen ended on a on a pretty solid note. We have some things we're saving for the uh, like the season wrap up episode that we're going to talk about next week. But another solid episode, no real complaints. Great, uh, great animation, action sequences were cool. Nobara character development was not expected or at all and it happened which just really added to it so that was cool so big thumbs up for jujitsu this week again solid way to wrap up the season and just that mini arc and on the tokyo side there was only one word coming into this week the man up here himself kisaki and it happened mm -hmm. it was a great kisaki episode this is exactly what i wanted out of kisaki before the end of the season and they did it you know what I mean? This is exactly what needed to happen for him. Now, Takamichi being thoroughly bewildered and not figuring out what was going on is on point. So I can't really, I don't really expect Takamichi to, you know, be a, like, quote, smart character at the moment. So that we, we talked about that last week with the whole he should have, like, checked in to see what was going on kind of deal. And hopefully in the future he does use his power more proactively than, it, like, as a reactive thing. Excuse me. Uh, because in this case, assuming that the last thing we hear is Isaki, you know, shooting him in the head, which is debatable based on the sound, as we discussed in the reaction video, that's just going to send him back to the past. You know what I mean? He didn't proact. He's not proactively using the power. He's basically just looking at it like, okay, I need to save Draken. I saved Draken. I'm going to go back to the future now and check to see what happened. He's not just checking on little things. He's only waiting for major, major events and not checking like before certain things. Like right after, if he had checked right after Baji, he might've had a slightly different future going on before he gets appointed 
as the first division uh, commander. So it's, it's sometimes it's the yeah. little things that you just as this character that just like the hindsight, like if if he was a smarter character and had more critical thinking, you know, it'd be something that I'd like to see him do. Like, OK, I need to go check in with the future to see like, OK, what little things have changed? What what's going on? What can I uh, talk to Naoto about what's changed and then go back and slowly like, you know, use his power more than he is. He's only really used yeah. it like three or four times and they haven't been incredibly useful. They've just been like reactive. Yeah, I mentioned this before in one of the reaction uh, that he actually has a huge advantage over most other characters in this kind of supernatural setup because he can go back and forth like basically at will all he needs to do is just shake it out to his hand right he's t in total yeah. control he he's not like say we've compared him to subaru from re-zero subaru has to he kind of has control of it because he can kill himself but you know he obviously doesn't want to do that unless he has to yeah the problem with that, though, is for one, yes, he has to go through the mental and physical trauma of killing himself, but also that doesn't necessarily work for Subaru because Subaru actually jumps between timelines when he does it. So if he doesn't get it right in one, if he doesn't get it right in one try, if he decides to reset, there's no guarantee he's going back to his last checkpoint because he has no idea, of, no way of knowing when he's going to get a new checkpoint. Right. And there's always differences because he's going to a different timeline. It's not just resetting again. Right. And in Takamichi's case, he knows exactly where he is. He's on that date. He's just going back 12 years or, or forward yeah. 12 years every time. The only real consequence to going back and forth to, with him is just that he has to let his autopilot kick in for however long he stays in the future, which if he's smart and only does it for like a few hours at a time necessary to check something. Or maybe a day or two, if it's something like, you know, getting a visit with a prisoner or something like that. Right. But I'm not I'm not saying that, like, I dislike the show because of this. You know what I mean? I, I'm not saying, like, it's bad writing or anything. I'm just saying if he was somebody else... You know, if he was a smarter character, we'd probably be seeing something different. But in this case, it just kind of sucks to see just a character in that, like, headspace of, no, dude, it's right there. You need to go back. <laughs> you need to go back and check, man. And then, you know, he doesn't do it, and you're just like, ugh. It's kind of like watching a streamer, like our buddy Burning Clock, and the thing's right in front of his face, but he doesn't <laughs> click the button. <laughs> or he clicks the button without paying attention, and freaking consumes a rare very unlockable item before it's actually usable right so <laughs> it or, takamichi you know, do a boss rush weekly that we cannot do right but takamichi being who is is probably going to lead to some fairly interesting oofs in that mat in that in that way so it's going to be a thing to see how his if he grows in that sense where he you know starts thinking okay I need to do this kind of thing that we just discussed. So maybe going forward, that would be a solid uh, character growth thing for him. And Kisaki, man. While we didn't get to know what is up with him, like potential power wise, he still has something going on. Like he knows what's going on with Takamichi like, to he... a certain extent. He knows there's something yeah. weird about him and that he has some sort of crazy supernatural power. And, it, and he knows yeah, whether he exactly knows about the time travel or has, you know, knowledge of the divergent timelines or whatever, doesn't really have any concrete evidence as to what. But he's definitely more aware than the other characters that Takamichi has doing something. Right. So I'll say this. He either has a power himself, which would be cooler, or he somehow, like Naoto, is aware of the differences occurring around him. You know what I mean? As Takamichi is changing shit, shit changes for Kisaki, and Kisaki is being drugged through all this stuff with Takamichi. After that first initial thing. But based on the fact that Kisaki started this whole thing with having Akun, you know, try to assassinate him, uh, eh? 
it's the timey-wimey nonsense that has to be unraveled. So I'm leaning more toward the fact that he knows something. Or he has some sort of power himself. But maybe he is also being dragged along with all these changes Takamichi is doing. And he just keeps waking up in other places going like, the fuck am I doing here? And has to piece together what's going on. Or his power just tells him like, okay, this is what's changed. You you know you've entered in a new timeline. This is all the crap that's changed, and you have to be aware of so you don't look like Takamichi does in this situation, where he has no idea what's going on because his future has so drastically changed this time. Yeah, I, I see it as being one of two things, really. Either Kisaki also has his own power, and he's deliberately manipulating Takamichi to try to get a better favor more favorable outcome for himself because like say his thing it's like say his power is just that he is aware of all the timelines but he himself doesn't change them so he needs to manipulate takamichi into changing them or the other thing that i think is a bit more likely is that he is like naoto and that he has somehow and become intrinsically bound to takamichi's power and he is just aware that the power is functioning, but has no control over it. Right. And that the whole, like, him being responsible for Takamichi's power awakening in the first place was just coincidence. Fair enough. But anything timey-wimey nonsense-wise is... It's gonna be a thing to unravel. But either way, I'm really glad we got Kisaki this week. Very excited about this. He's a, a solid villain. You know, he, he even pulled off the classic, you know, hey, I'm the one pouring your drink to, you know, poison you gag. You know what I mean? Or knock you out, whatever. And we, we talked about during that during the reaction as well. So classic villain. I like it. He, he's not above the classics. And I can appreciate that. <laughs> but that being said, again... Both shows had good weeks, so this one is another tough one. Uh, honestly, if it wasn't for the Nobara stuff, I'd probably, I'd probably lean more toward uh, giving it to Tokyo. But after the whole Nobara thing there at the end, it became really close for me. But if I personally have to choose one, I'm not sold that Nobara is going to like break that stereotypical shonen girl syndrome. While it was nice. Um, I still probably am going... Uh, I'm personally leaning toward Tokyo this week myself just because I had personally really wanted Kisaki for, like, the whole season, and we finally got him. Uh... I'm leaning more towards Jujutsu. Not by a whole lot, though. The Nobara stuff is a big draw to, for me. Uh, and... This episode for the Tokyo episode, like, there wasn't a whole, this wasn't season finale, which kind of puts me off of the episode a bit. Like, there's a lot of interesting stuff that happened, like, this, with this as an episode, but without the first episode of season two, it's just kind of left tagging in the air. This, like, if this was, if season two wasn't confirmed, this would be a read the manga ending, and I'm not a fan of read the manga endings. Fair enough. Whereas, Jujutsu, as far as final episodes are concerned, this would have still been fine as just a standalone season if season two wasn't announced. Like, yeah. there's still a lot of lead in, like, obviously, season two definitely is mm -hmm. coming. But it still would have been a good watch, even just on its own. Definitely. And that that's something I want to bring up, but I'm going to save that for the, like, when we do the wrap, the season wrap-ups next week. So I'll just leave that for that. But, um, yeah. I mean, this is honestly the first time we've disagreed. How about that? It finally happened. It was bound to happen at one of these points. So, um, I don't know. Uh, this is just at, at this point it's just personal preference more than like objective assessment of who had the who had the better episode um so if i have to look at it outside of personal preference and just completely be objective i would have to objectively give the point to jujutsu because i think it's objectively slightly better 
because it has that finality. It has it. They already built up for what's going to be happening next season. And we, we know while we know what's going to be happening with next season of Tokyo, because that's been announced the whole, um, you know, Christmas Eve arc and stuff like that. Without that knowledge, this is the only thing we can really assume is that Takamichi is just going to get sent back in the path to the past and he's gonna have yeah. to like figure it out it's 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 a weird way to end the season cliffhanger wise it's not a terrible cliffhanger by any stretch of the imagination but it's just a little a little weird it's not bad per per se but it's just a little just a little odd like the only thing this ending really tells us about season two is that takamichi's potentially going to be stuck in the past for a while because if he assuming he is dying here uh then he's not going to be able to come back to the future until he has a future. Right. So he has to make a reasonably significant change, and he's probably going to have to think on the fly without going back to the future, because I assume it'll be kind of like that, you know, he tries to shake Naoto's hand in the past to go back, and it's just going to be like a wah-wah sound, like you can't do that. <laughs> you're kind of dead. <laughs> I can't exactly go to the future when you're dead in the future. Right. And the only counter to that is, like I said, the last sound we heard is questionable. It's something hitting the floor, like when somebody falls, like like Chifuyu did here, which that was pretty crazy uh, and pretty hardcore. Mind you, that's something we didn't really talk about, but we'll, <laughs> that was just part of the reason why the episode was really good. Um, so it's either Takamichi just getting shot in the head and we didn't hear the gunshot and him falling, you know, the chair falling. Um, that's not it was definitely not a gunshot. I can assure you that much or somebody like kicking in the door or something to potentially save him maybe um one, one of the other members of uh tomon that's still around because draken got executed or, in this timeline and mikey is mia naoto. or naoto yeah or so naoto. it's pretty heavily implied that takamichi autopilot in this timeline has been playing double agent for naoto right so yeah, uh, if I have to be objective about it, Jujutsu's episode was just, you know, like 45-55, you know what I mean? J just because of the, the slight weirdness of this cliffhanger. And it's not terrible. I mean, I still liked it. Yeah. It's, it, it's fine, but if I have to, like, look at it objectively, it's still really close and whatever, you know what I mean? It Both, both these episodes were solid. It, Jujutsu's was just slightly better and um but honestly with the way Tokyo wrapped up this season no freaking repeated uh just you know recaps those have been gone the last like three four episodes three. so yeah. that's awesome hopefully that stays the way it is so we don't have to rag on that ever again <laughs> and Going into season two, hopefully this studio learned some stuff. So I, I will still be watching it, obviously, just to see where it's going. But I'm kind of hoping that season two um, learns from a lot of the mistakes that we harped on. Well, we do try to stay more positive here, obviously, because we're not the kind of people that are just going to put up these reaction and review videos and just shit on stuff just to shit on it and make up bullshit reasons to shit on stuff. We try to be a, as objective as possible. So yeah, we were talking about this a bit off camera, but like the only other show we've watched, whether it be for the channel or on our own personal time, that's even come close to how critical we are with this show is fucking ReZero. And yeah. that's mostly just because we both hate Subaru. Yeah. So that, that's just that is what it is. So uh, objectively going to have to give uh, Jujutsu their uh, 20th point. But again, at least it was close again. At least it was a it was a tough call. Uh, you know what I mean? And for me personally, like I said, I prefer just subjectively, I prefer the Tokyo episode just because of Kisaki. And I think they did a great job with him. So uh, that 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 is what it is. But objectively speaking, I think uh, Jujutsu had the better episode. But And again, I've talked about it before. This isn't the best compare and contrast for a versus show. And we know what we're doing in the future and we'll announce that in the future. But we have a pretty easy one lined up coming up later this year in Bleach versus My Hero Academia. So that one is going to be yeah. way easier to deal with. So <laughs> going into these, we assumed they'd both be pseudo battle school things. And uh, that wasn't the case. But we have a new method for the versus show. So we know how it's going to work out from now on. So this 
this won't happen again. That's why this was a beta test. So we hope you enjoyed this, and in the future, it'll make way more sense, and the method Dude. will be much uh, easier to read and more fun to deal with. Debatable. Yeah, I guess that is debatable. We'll see. But Jujutsu takes the point this week. Again, it was very close, and for me personally, I still uh, preferred the uh, Tokyo episode just as a from a personal standpoint, uh, because Kisaki. Uh, I, I think he's going to be a solid character going forward, and yeah. But that being said, uh, for this first part of it, uh, Jujutsu takes it 20 to 8, but a lot of that has to deal with uh, all the stuff we ragged on about Tokyo in the mid-season and all the recap stuff, and you all know why, but... Uh, we'll be back next week with the big uh, overarching season wrap-up episodes for both shows and then the uh, season wrap-up for the Versus show and the announcement for what uh, the next three shows we're going to be doing on the channel. So, ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube and beyond, however you're watching, we always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with us here in the dojo, and this was another episode of Versus, the last one for this season, uh, besides the wrap-up one next week. And... Yeah, it's been one hell of a ride, and I'd have enjoyed the hell of it, and I hope you have too. So, have a good morning, evening, afternoon, whatever it is for you to watch. Have a good one. See you next time.